Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. This week we are studying the ministry and the person of the Holy Spirit. And we're talking about his personality. He is a person with a real personality. And we saw his personality revealed in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and or meekness, and self-control. So these are characteristics of the Holy Spirit and His personality. Hallelujah. What a beautiful personality. A personality of love and joy and peace, kindness and goodness, gentleness. Amen. We also saw yesterday that there are many symbols used in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, that symbolize the Holy Spirit. And these symbols are used to reveal to us different characteristics of the nature and personality of the Holy Spirit. So we saw yesterday that the Holy Spirit was symbol is symbolized by a dove and that the dove symbolizes and means purity, peace, gentleness, beauty, love, and innocence. And then yesterday we stopped by looking at the symbol of wind. The Holy Spirit is also symbolized by wind. Also, we see in John 3, 8, it says, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. So here we see in John 3, 8, the wind blowing. This one of the meanings of or 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 meanings of the symbol of the wind is it is invisible. You don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. You cannot see it. So it is with the Holy Spirit and those who are born from the Spirit. That was saying, but we are talking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and who he is. He is invisible like the wind and you do not see him where he's coming from or where he's going or how he's moving. Another meaning of the wind is, is it is refreshing. It can be refreshing. If you're hot and tired, you turn on a fan or you're outside and there's a cool breeze, there is a refreshing that comes from the wind. There, That refreshing is also energizing. So there's an energizing power that comes from the wind. And the when the wind of the Holy Spirit blows upon us and through us, it energizes us, refreshes us, and empowers us. Hallelujah. And then another meaning of the symbol of the wind is it is power. And just like we see, and we talked about this when we talked about faith is a force. Faith is a spiritual force. Like wind is a spiritual force. It moves things. And so we see this wind that's why we use windmills, because it will generate power. Wind produces power, and it is power and force. It is a force of power coming upon us. And the Holy Spirit can come upon us with his power and bring energizing. Hallelujah. Also, an this comes just even from the Greek and the Hebrew word for a spirit, and it's related to the wind. But another meaning is breath, breath. And in the Hebrew, old, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the New Testament was written in Greek. And both the Old Testament, the Hebrew word for spirit and the Greek word for spirit are both also equally translated breath. Breath is spirit. Spirit is breath. So for example, in the Greek word, the word pneuma is the word for spirit. And it's also the word for breath. So spirit and breath are the same. Well, what is breath? It's the breath of life. 
So wind and breath also represent life. Life. And we see in Genesis 2, 7, the Lord God formed the, the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Hallelujah. So when the breath of the life of the Holy Spirit is breathed into us, we receive new life. Hallelujah. It is the life of God. So when the spirit of God comes into our spirit, it makes us born again. We get born again and we get new life. Hallelujah. The life of God entering into our spirit. Praise God. Now, another meaning of another symbol, I mean, of the Holy Spirit is the symbol of water. Water is used also to symbolize the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 7, verses 38 and 39, it says, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit. So the Spirit is the streams of living water flowing from within you. By this he meant the Spirit whom those who believed in him were, were later to receive up to that time. The spirit had not been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So we see the streams of living water flowing from within you. He means the spirit of God living in you and flowing from within you. We also see the water, the rivers of water mentioned in Ezekiel. Chapter 47, verse 9, Ezekiel 47, 9. This is where we saw the, the river that came out from the, the temple. It says, swarms of living creatures will live where the river flows. It says also where the river flows, everything will live. And we see the river of life also in Revelation 22:17 The spirit and the bride say come and let him who hears say come whoever is thirsty let him come and whoever wishes let him take the free gift of the water of life So we see that water and the rivers of water, the streams of living water that come from the throne of God that represents the Holy Spirit. And what does it represent? Life. Water is a symbol of life. Where we saw in Ezekiel, wherever the river flows, everything will live and when we receive the Holy Spirit, streams of living water will flow from within him. We receive new life. So water represents, number one, it represents life. Water is a symbol of life. And then also water brings refreshing. When you're thirsty, it is thirst quenching. Water brings restoration and water brings Cleansing, cleansing. There's washing and cleansing in the water of the spirit, as well as the refreshing and the thirst quenching. So the Holy Spirit is symbolized by water. We receive from him life, refreshing, thirst quenching and cleansing and restoration. And there's another symbol that we see symbolizing the Holy Spirit. It is fire. Fire is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2, verse 3, it says, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Also, we see fire in 1 Corinthians 3, 13. It says, his work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. Also in Isaiah 
chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. Then one of the seraphs, that was the angels, flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. Verse 7, with it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. So what does fire represent? In these verses, we see purging, purging and cleansing of impurities. There is the works tested by fire, cleansing from impurities and guilt and uncleanness. Fire represents the purging. The Holy Spirit and the fire of the Holy Spirit coming upon us is supposed to bring a cleansing in our lives. A lot of people, a lot of Christians are not allowing the Holy Spirit to purge them from uncleanness, sinfulness, and ungodliness. They are holding on to ungodly practices. But you need the fire of the Holy Spirit to purge you and to purify you of all ungodliness and uncleanness and all impure qualities about you. Also, fire represents passion. You know, we talk about the fire of love, that passion of love. It represents passion and it represents zeal. There's a fire that burns within Jeremiah chapter 20 verse verse 9 says, but if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. So that Fire represents passion. It's a passionate love, but there's also a passionate zeal. It's the word of God, like fire shut up in my bones. And so there's the fire of God that gets in us, that causes us to be passionate about God, to be passionate about even the work of God and serving God. So you should allow the fire of God to burn in you. Let the fire of God purge you. And then let's, let the fire of God stir up a passion and a zeal burning in you like fire shut up in your bones that you can't hold it in. It gives you a zeal for serving God and doing the work of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And then one more symbol I want to mention today is the symbol of oil. Oil is used both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, and of course there's many, many, many scriptures about oil, but here in 1 Samuel 16, 13, we see it says, so Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, and that was anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. So what is the oil representing? It represents anointing. And what is anointing? It is empowerment. There is an endowment of power that comes upon you to do the works of God and the works of the Holy Spirit. So there is an empowerment. It comes upon you to speak in tongues. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. But it also comes upon you to do whatever God calls you to do. And a lot of people think anointing is only for the fivefold ministry for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to preach and do miracles. No, that's not all that the power of the Holy Spirit is for. The power of the Holy Spirit is to help you in whatever you are called to do, whether you're called to be a mechanic or an electrician or a teacher or a doctor or a computer professional, computer technician or whatever, whatever you are called to do, 
You can also be anointed to do it. You can be anointed. Just like I talked about that surgeon, the brain surgeon, he was born again and spirit filled and the Holy Spirit helped him to perform surgeries. So whatever you're called to do, you can be a better mechanic, a better electrician, a better teacher, a better computer expert, professional IT or web developer or or whatever it is, lawyer or anything, nurse, doctor, whatever you are called to do, whatever your giftings are, the Holy Spirit can come upon you to anoint you. And, and boost your ability from natural to supernatural. That's what the anointing is. And that's what the anointing does. It takes you from a level of operating in natural skill and knowledge to supernatural skill and ability and knowledge. It takes you up to God's level. It gives you ability that you don't have. A, a definition of the anointing we get in Isaiah ten twenty seven. Also, and the anointing destroys the yokes, removes the burdens. So it's a yoke destroying, burden removing power of God. It is the power of God coming on natural flesh to do what the natural flesh cannot do. So it gives you supernatural power and ability. So you can receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit coming upon you. There is an anointing to be a better mother. To be a better father. Maybe you don't, maybe you're having a situation with your children and you're struggling. What do I do with them? Well, the Holy Spirit can help you and anoint you to be a better father, a better mother, a better wife, a better husband, whatever you are and whatever you are called to do and whatever you are called to be. God has given you the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will send you the Holy Spirit. And this symbol of oil is the symbol of the anointing of the Holy Spirit who comes upon you to help you do better than what you can do. To take you from a level of operating in your natural skill and ability and knowledge to operating in a supernatural skill, ability and knowledge. And that anointing of the Holy Spirit is available to every Christian. If you're born again, if you're a believer and you've been born again, this anointing of the Holy Spirit is available for you Every day. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we see this. Several of these symbols represented power. There was the power of wind. The power of fire. fire, And there's the power of the anointing. Symbolized by oil. And we saw that the works of the Holy Spirit are works of power, works of signs and wonders and miracles. They are creative works. Remember when the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the deep waters in Genesis 1, 2, it brought the the revitalizing and the recreating power of God over the face of the deep. Um, also in Job 26, 13, the Holy Spirit garnished the heavens or clothed the heavens. Hallelujah. So we see the power of the Holy Spirit working. The, the, the power of the Holy Spirit is available to you. The power of the Holy Spirit was the power that parted the Red Sea. When Moses stretched his hand over the sea in Exodus 14, 21, it, there was a strong wind that blew and turned that into dry land and the waters were divided 
and they went across on dry ground. That was the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God that was even behind David's stone when he killed Goliath and he flung that stone. There was a supernatural power in that. When David flung that stone at Goliath, that, there was no natural power. There was a supernatural power that was behind that stone that thrust it forward into the forehead of Goliath. And it brought down Goliath and killed him. Hallelujah. And then the power that worked miracles in the ministry of Jesus. We already talked about in Luke 4. Verses 18 and 19, Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. So at power to preach, he has sent me to proclaim freedom. So there is power to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. So the sight for the blind, there is miracle working power. Also in Acts 10, 38, Acts 10.38, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he ran, went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. So the power of the Holy Spirit empowered Jesus to heal. Remember, I said that already this week, that Jesus did the miracles he did, not because he was God, but because the power of the Holy Spirit came upon him. That's what the Bible says. You know, there are millions of Christians who just have been taught traditionally, well, Jesus could do miracles because he's the son of God. You will not find that in the Bible. Remember, I was teaching on the authority of God's word and our traditions have made the word of God of no effect for many Christians. And many Christians have been taught that Jesus did miracles because he was the son of God. And we had to say, where is it in the Bible? Where is it in the Bible? The Bible has to be highest priority, final authority and last word in your life. And don't believe things just because your pastor said it or your grandma said it or because you believed it all your life. Where is it in the Bible? And you need to take all of your theological doctrines and what you believe and see where is it in the Bible? Is there a scripture that says Jesus did miracles because he's the son of God? No, not one. Never once did Jesus say, or was there a scripture referencing Jesus saying Jesus did miracles because he's the son of God. Every scripture referring to Jesus and the miracles, it was because of the power of the Holy Spirit upon him. We see it here in Acts 10, 38 and in Luke 4, 18 and 19. The Holy Spirit anointed him to preach and to perform miracles. Acts 10, 38, the Holy Spirit and God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. And he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. And Jesus said in John fourteen twelve that he who believes in me will do what I have been doing and greater works than these shall he do because I go to the father. If he did miracles because he's the son of God, then he would not have said you can do them. He would have said, don't you try this. Nobody else can do this but me because I'm the son of God. He never said it. He said, greater works than these shall you do. Why? Because I go to the father and I'm sending you the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And that's where we go in Acts 1, 8, that you will receive what? Power, power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem 
and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the earth. And then the power of the Holy Spirit comes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 with, with the giftings and the manifestations of the Spirit for working of miracles and for gifts of healings and for discerning of, t- of spirits, tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, faith. All of these are the giftings of the Holy Spirit, empowerments of the Holy Spirit for you today. You need to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. I'm leaving and I'm sending you the Holy Spirit to come upon you and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Acts 1 8. So the Holy Spirit is the power of God available to us as believers today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm out of time for this week. We will continue studying next week the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the person of the Holy Spirit. We're going to continue that study. Now, if you are being encouraged and blessed and fed by these radio broadcasts, I encourage you to support this ministry and this broadcast and be a partner with us. If you are receiving, then you also give back into it and be a blessing to others because we are reaching Colorado with the word of God that will change and transform lives. I'm receiving beautiful emails emails from people, how their lives are being changed. I want to hear from you. Write to me, testify to me, and also tell me where you are listening. I want to know where you are listening. Now write to me and um, stay in partnership with us and have a blessed weekend and be led by the Holy Spirit. Remember, God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.